Our first guest is going to be a blast. She is just such a burst of energy. She is a huge Cardinals fan and just all around sports fanatic. I slightly wish she was on the next, the last episode. She could have went head to head with Emily on some Cardinals trivia if you guys watched that episode. But uh, my first guest is a sports fanatic. And not only does she love sports, but she found a way to turn that into a career. She was a PE teacher for 35 years. So hats off to her. That's a lot of years with kids. <laughs> As a mother of two wonderful boys, Patty knows just how special a mother's love and bond are. Because after all, she learned from the very best, her mother, Ruth. Ruth was a one-of-a-kind mother who taught her three girls strength, courage, and unconditional love. Ruth was diagnosed with ALS in 2015, and she lost her battle in 2020. Here representing... Roos Rowdies, please welcome ALSA Chicago chapter, our very own ambassador, Patty Houseworth. Hi, Susan. Hello, Patty. Welcome. I love this. And we were talking before the show. I love all of the, the props you have going on behind you. You've got your Roos Rowdies yep. shirts, Dons. I love that. I think you're, are you wearing one? Yes, I'm wearing our latest one with mom with her angel wings and halo. I love that. From our superheroes. Yes. I love it. Well, people are welcoming you to the show already. So thank you guys for being so warm and welcoming. Now, you, you're retired now. How, yes. How is retired life? Because you're living everyone's dream. I would like to retire now, please. Yeah. <laughs> and before I tell you what I'm actually doing in retirement season, I was a marathon runner. I ran Ooh. 12 marathons and had a 20-year career of distance running. So I know what it's like to pound the pavement for 26.2 miles. So oh go, go all you uh, ALS supporters on the marathon. That's great. Yeah. But, go team ALS. Yeah. And, well, actually then, before you tell me about retirement, since you've been running marathons for 20 some years, I mean, what was it like to you to have those uh, friends, family, to have those individuals on the sidelines cheering you on? Oh, yeah. And my biggest supporter was my husband who ran most of my marathons with me side by side because i told him i'm not even going to attempt running a marathon unless you do, you know you run it with me for at least for the first one and so he was right he was a marathon runner as well and so he got me started on it when oh. we were in college yeah so i love it the couple that runs together clearly stays together so good yeah that's how we met actually on the track Aww. <laughs> so, yeah but my running days are, are over. I, I still piddle around a little bit, but mainly walking. And the, the biggest thing in retirement now is playing pickleball. So I'm hooked oh. on pickleball. My sister told me I'd be okay. addicted to it. And it's uh, definitely addicting. So on days like today, who, who doesn't want to be out hitting the pickleball? I don't even know so. what pickleball is, if I'm being totally honest. <laughs> yeah. So. It, it's kind of a version of tennis. Uh, it's a it's a racket sport with a like a hard okay. wiffle ball. Yeah. So and okay, I played so badminton in college, so I totally like the racket sports. Oh, I love it. it so, well, you are yeah. a true sports fanatic. I think that is the best way to just describe you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you love yeah. all the sports. Well, oh, good. I'm yeah. glad retirement has been treating you well and keeping you super active. Yep. Yep. It is. Once I got through some medical issues my first year, I'm good to go and enjoying life, traveling, good, like enjoying, enjoying my six-year-old granddaughter in Colorado. We get out there as much as we can and going to Colorado or Virginia to see the boys. So it's I love been it. Great. Well, you never know. We might see you on Team ALS running the Chicago Marathon uh, before, you know, walking. I keep that, saying that. Yeah. To, to yeah. walk the Chicago Marathon might be my goal someday. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 that's probably in my future. I could I could definitely get out there and volunteer walking. Yep. But I like that. Now, well, that's an exclusive. You've said it now. I, that's right. That's right. Now <laughs> it's just a matter of, yep, yeah, doing it. It's but, out uh, there. Yeah. And it's always nice now in retirement, just volunteering for yeah. wherever, whatever, and have the time and the flexibility to do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, people well, we say you're busier ahead. when you're retired than when you're at your job. And it's a pretty true uh, fact. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're happy that you're part of our family and that we get you for more now. That's <laughs> now right. Now that you have more time for us. Now, yep. your mom, she was a huge fan. I love when we talk. She loves God. She loves the Cardinals. And she mm -hmm. loves U of I. 
And of course, oh. her family. <laughs> So she Absolutely. was such a special woman with such a special story, but I found it really adorable that when we talked, you you had watched our last episode where we had Emily Dean on, who was mm-hmm. sharing her story about her mother, Ray Lynn, who lost her battle with ALS and all the things that ensued from that. And the first thing you said to me was you were insanely shocked by the story. So why were you so shocked at Emily's story and feel such a connection? It just seemed like my mom and her would hit it off with all the things that they had in common, their sense of humor, their love of family, um, you know, wanting to be attending this event, that event, you know, with family, which was, you know, very important to mom, Uh, the work ethic that they both had. My mom worked for 35 years at the University of Illinois, Um, you know, and Emily's mom was a hard worker, sounded like, you know, running her own business. And yeah, it just, and the fact that Emily and I both miss our mom tremendously, just like anybody would, and just missing those phone calls that I know we both experienced, um, being able to talk to our mom, but yeah. And of course, Cardinal fans, I think we're, I think she was a Cardinal fan, if I recall. She was, yeah. yeah she was a diehard Cardinals fan too. Yeah. I know you were saying it was just a sort of a story that was all too familiar to you. It yes. felt like you were listening to your own story about exactly. your mom. I yeah. just think that's this is one of my favorite things about this show is that it brings these amazing connections together. And now I'm I mean, you never know. You and Emily may hit it off, but I have a feeling that your moms are up there partying in heaven together. Oh, yeah. And watching the Cardinals together. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And they may have just, you know, made the best of friends. So yeah, I just yeah. I love that we can bring. I, I don't know if uh, Emily's mom ever got nervous watching the Cardinal games like my mom this week. We're going to a Cardinal game uh, Friday for the playoff game, and you know, anytime mom was watching the line night or the Cardinals, there were times where she was nervous, Nellie, and she couldn't stand to be in the same room. She had to leave the room, but you know, she would get through it but she was just a a diehard sports fan. Yeah, the Illini and the Cardinals, for sure. Well, my fingers are crossed for you because we talked about it on the phone that if they they make it to the World Series, you're going, you're taking your dad. So I want that to happen. That's that's a bucket list for him. Yes. (laughs) I want this for you. (laughs) That's right. So go cards. Yes, go go cards, go cards. Well, how did your mom, so back, back to Ruth, how did your mom handle ALS. How did she handle this diagnosis? Well, from the moment she was diagnosed, she she was brave. She was determined that, you know, she was going to get through this, you know, with a smile on her face. And, you know, she continued to have her sense of humor. Um, but ultimately, it was her faith that she had to the very end. And she she was just she knew it was not going to be something she could beat. You know, uh, the fact that she had it later in life, she wasn't diagnosed till she was 76. Um, and she died when she was 81. You know, she, she knew that she had, she had accomplished a lot in her life, but she was just at the stage where she was enjoying her retirement, still living in yeah. Florida six months out of the year at her Florida home. Um, she was golfing up until the time of her diagnosis still. So she was still in really good shape and yeah. So, but she was determined she was going to make the best of it. And she was as joyful as a person could be through the whole entire journey. Mm-hmm. I mean, I made this comment time and time again on the show, but it's just, it's so true. Every time I hear a story about a loved one that was diagnosed. I mean, they all have this undeniable, this this courage, this just positivity that is so beautiful. And I don't know, I I can't imagine being in that position and dealing with something as big as that and having such an incredible attitude. So I think that is amazing of your mom and of all the amazing people that are currently battling ALS with that same love and hope. Yeah, and then as a family, you know, it was quite a shock for the family. And then we just, you know, we got behind mom a hundred percent and we each had our roles that we felt like we could fit into. My sister, Deanna, being a hospice nurse, she took on the medical aspect of it. 
um, handled all the medical marijuana with mom, which was a godsend really to get her through what she needed. And my younger sister, Teresa, an accountant by trade, handled all the finances and, you know, dealing with insurance and just all the, the ins and outs of that. And of course I was the middle child and still working, um, you know, debating whether to retire early or not and decided, no, I kind of needed my job for my sense of, you know, sanity going through this journey, but being an hour away or even 45 minutes away when I was done with teaching, I would just hop in the car and go right to Champaign and be there and do whatever was needed. So, and even still to this day, after mom's gone and helping with dad, it's like, I'm the middle one. I, and I'm retired. I can do what you guys can't do, you know? So it was a great team effort by, you know, the family and just the support of all the extended family, you know, our Roos Rowdies team, you know, everybody, you know, just doing what they could for mom. Yeah. And some of them are here watching tonight. Cause we just saw that your cousin, yeah. your cousin gave yeah. you a shout out. <laughs> yeah. They said, hi. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah. Hey, yeah. We have great tonight, support. Maybe. You do. And I loved hearing that when we talked on the phone because your mom was so devoted to her family. All of you guys are so close knit and it's a big family. I mean, your your yeah. parents were married for 63 years, which is amazing. Yeah. And they they have you three girls, you and your sisters, and then seven grandkids and 10 great grandkids. Absolutely. So that's a pretty awesome crew. So is that is that whole crew a part of Ruth Rowdy? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh Lots of Bruce rallies. I, I want to say we have probably actually on the list on the roster, maybe 60 some members, <laughs> you know, so I've got, yeah, college friends and then we've got relatives. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, took it upon, it. I took it upon myself when we first started with the walk. And I know we'll get into this a little bit later about the T-shirts, but, you know, just tried to encourage everyone. Hey. I'll send you a t-shirt, you know, just to bring awareness to ALS. So we get everybody in t-shirts. I love it. And they're styling too. They're cute. You can see the evolution yep. of the t-shirts. Yes. Between... Yeah. We, we get a different one each year. And of course this one um, was different after mom passed away because we added the angel's wings and a halo for, it. but yeah. So beautiful. Well, your mom, I, I'm going to keep saying it because it is completely true. She went through this battle with, you, said, you were saying, with such hope and just such a positive attitude and so much courage because she wanted to live as normally as possible. She didn't she want did. this to change her lifestyle. She mm -hmm. still wanted to do all the things she could do and see what she wanted to see. So when we had kind of talked, so what were a couple of those bucket list items that she was able to do? Sure. And like you said, she wanted to continue being as normal as possible. She didn't want to bring attention to herself as much as she liked to go out to eat. She didn't want to be the center of attention and focus, you know, people to focus on that. Um, yeah, that, that was real important to her. Um, some of the things on her bucket list, um, her niece had got married up in Wisconsin. So mom was never going to do anything illegal. And since she was on the medical marijuana, she couldn't travel across into Wisconsin using that. Uh, but she still wanted to go. And we said, okay, let's go. And we made the best of it for, I think it was three nights in a hotel. And, uh, but she really was missing her medical marijuana to help her. But uh, we had a great time at the wedding and it, it was, it was worth it. And then she was always big into concerts, dinner shows, going to performances. And so she was able to see the Phantom of the Opera uh, before she passed. Um, traveling to see relatives, because um, we have relatives all over the country. Um, and we told her, we'll put you on an airplane. We'll take you wherever, we'll get you there. You know, we'll take caregivers with us, whatever needs yeah. to be done. So she made a couple trips to Kansas City um, to stay at my sister's house. Um, she was able to see her sister again a couple times um, that was in Kansas City. Grandkids, great grandkids that were there. Um, of course, traveling for sporting events, the Cardinal Games. She actually, we 
took her on her 80th birthday to a Cardinal game. So mm -hmm. we had her bundled up even in her Cardinal blanket that we had specially made for her wheelchair. Um, had her nice and toasty warm. And that was, we had her inside uh, for an all you could eat and drink area. So kept her comfortable. Line Eye basketball games was season ticket holder for that. And when it got to the point where she needed care 24 seven, we even, well, I shouldn't say we, it would be my parents, purchased a third season ticket in the handicap section so we could bring the caregiver. So it would be mom and dad and mm. the caregiver uh, it, to be able to continue to go to the Illini games. So she, because she didn't want to stay home and watch it on TV, she wanted to be there in person because she did that her whole life being, you know, a big, big Illini fan. It's so, true. She wasn't going to let ALS get in the way. No, no way. She was I love that she was gonna, still out there. Yep. Yep. She was not going to let ALS slow her down. Um, and even to the point where, you know, when we encouraged her, oh, let's just get out of the house, mom. We can put you in the van. And because it might be the dead of winter, but it would be a beautiful sunny day, even though it was cold. We'll put you in there and we can drive around and you can see the fall colors or you can see the snow, what, you know, to get her out and about. And, you know, she would even go for that. Or we drive to a drive through just to get some ice cream for her or whatever. <laughs> so, Aww. yeah. Well, yeah, she wasn't letting that stop her. And she definitely <laughs> wasn't letting it get in the way of making special moments because I find this so beautiful. And I think this is, I hope that people hear this and get inspired too, to, to kind of take these special moments on also. So you were super creative, all of you, and making sure you sort of captured things for the future. So tell me about a very special family book. Okay. So it was more than one book, actually. Um, we were trying to be proactive with mom's illness and, you know, not knowing when or if she would lose her voice, which, thank God, she never did uh, because of the type of the ALS she had. But we were proactive not knowing this. And so we purchased a bunch of Hallmark recording books. And we picked out several, diff several different kinds, you know, for stories. And then we left it up to mom and the caregiver. They worked together to record mom's voice and not only recording her voice, but she wrote a special either scripture verse or special message to each great grandchild and grandchild. And then as far as a picture with mom, we had individual pictures that my sister Deanna took of each great grandchild individually with mom over a span of maybe a year um, to have that picture put in that book. And of course, the one agreement mom wanted to make sure we have went by was that these were not to be handed out until she passed. So all these were handed out, I think, at the funeral. Um, we gave them to all the relatives. Matter of fact, us girls got one, um, all the grandkids, all the great grandkids, some special family members that were very, very close to mom um, that we were able to give them to them too. Um, and yeah, they're just great keepsakes. I know every time I go to Colorado, my granddaughter, she wants grandma to pull yeah. out great grandmas. Yeah. And do that. And of course, I took it upon myself to make a grandma one for my granddaughter. So we have two, we have me, my voice saved on one and then yeah, my mom's. And so every trip we're, we're doing that and we have that. So I love that. And the, I think uh, it is such a yeah. beautiful idea to, to keep her voice around so that everybody always remembers it. Oh yeah. And us girls found out pretty soon after mom passed away when we transferred mom's cell phone to my dad, because my dad never had a cell phone. So we used my mom's for my dad. Well, when I call, we each were calling my dad, you know, to check up on him and he wouldn't answer the phone. Mom's voice came on there. It was her voicemail mm -hmm. was still on the phone. And so we actually kept that. So even a couple of days ago, I was calling my dad and Hi, this is Ruth. Please leave me a message. And 
you know, we're hearing mom's voice when my dad doesn't pick up the phone. So sometimes <laughs> it's, it's at the right moment that we want to hear it. And other times it, you know, it, there's triggers and that could be a trigger, you know, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just love that her yeah. voice is still all around all the time when you, when you want it, when you miss yes. it, when you feel like you need to hear it a little uh -huh. bit. Yep. Mm. Well, you guys, with this journey, your mom was battling ALS for five years, and you guys were able to use a lot of the services that the ALS Association's Chicago chapter provides. I mean, you were you experienced the support group that we were talking about early in the show that's coming up. You mm -hmm. took part in the boot camps. You were even a part of the bereavement group after your mother passed. Yes, so for a whole year. What, yeah, so what have these programs done for you? Or what would you say is the biggest value of these programs through the chapter? Well, I know this was mentioned. I think Emily mentioned it. They're free. And who can knock free resources, you know? So it doesn't cost a thing. And we couldn't have done it. I, I can honestly tell, tell you that our family could not have done it and made it through this journey for five years without the resources of the chapter. Um, and by those resources, we we were not alone. It is such a close knit, we've, it's, it's an extended family, the ALS family is. And it, it doesn't matter, it's 24 seven. I know I could text somebody, I could phone them, I could email them and I would get some sort of response. Even if they didn't have the right answer right then and there, they would do the legwork to find out what we needed or get what we needed. Perfect example was when we took mom to one of the St. Louis games and it was an overnight stay and we needed to be in a hotel. And she was at the stage where we had a caregiver at the time. And, and said, you know, we really need a Hoyer lift to keep mom safe. Well, and you, when you pack up the van just for an overnight with an ALS patient, it's like you're taking so many things. And the Hoyer lift was not one of those things we could condense and put in the van. Yeah. So I called my favorite person, my care service coordinator, Kelly, said, Kelly, can you help us out? We need a Hoyer lift at this hotel on this night coming up. OK, I'll get it done. And she did the legwork and there was a Hoyer lift waiting for us in our hotel room for mom that the caregiver could use. So things like that, they will bend over backwards for you. And, uh, and, and, and just the, the support group people, like the bereavement group, we were all in the same boat. You can share your stories. You can learn from one another. It may not be the same journey that I went through or they're going through, but yeah. we can help each other. Mm -hmm. Help it. it is. I think there is something special in that community that you guys have been through. Like you said, even though the story might not be the same, the end result was the same. The mm -hmm. the feelings of loss, you know, you guys are all dealing with those things. And to be able to know that you're not alone in that, I think is Absolutely. something really special, even before the bereavement groups. I mean, it's the support groups, just knowing that you're not oh. alone walking through that journey. I can imagine it's yeah. is incredibly powerful. Uh, and my story dad about says, my dad says, when are they coming back in person? Because he hated that COVID hit and he couldn't attend the support groups in person because he's not tech savvy. And, you know, I, even though I got him set up on the phone or a computer or something, he just couldn't do it. And so trying to have those in person, you know, is very beneficial for some of the people I know. Yeah, it's going to happen. I mean, we're <laughs> <laughs> the walks were happening this year. Speaking of you Absolutely. had the, yes. this team that if you guys are like, what are you talking about? We've been saying it multiple times. Ruth Rowdy's. So oh, Ruth yeah. Rowdy's was a team at the walk. You guys just did the champagne walk. So quickly, because yes. um, you know we could just talk all night. But uh, quickly, tell us about how was the walk? How was team Ruth Rowdy's? Oh, we were there and supporting one another and supporting other teams as well. And yeah, we, it was a beautiful day. We had a great time and it was our fourth walk in person and mom had done three of the four walks. Um, so definitely they're better in person than they are the mini, the mini walks, yeah. but You're yeah. A fan. Yeah. Good. I love that. And I love that your mom got to experience three of those. And now that you, yes. even after she's gone, 
you are continuing that legacy and you are continuing to keep Bruce Rowdy's going. And I heard actually that a special someone within our chapter actually gave you the name. Bruce oh, Rowdy. yes. Yes. If I can use her name, Peggy, I don't, yeah. I don't know her exact title if she's a social worker, but she was on mom's ALS team and we had already been going up to rush with mom every three months for about a year because the champagne walk wasn't even in existence. So after about a year of mom's journey, they said, oh, you got to come up with a team name. And we said, oh, OK. So we brainstormed. We knew we wanted Ruth. We couldn't come up with another R name. So when we walked in one time, we asked the team of doctors and nurses and everybody there. So what do you guys think we should be called? You know? <laughs> and they go, Peggy goes, I got the perfect name, Rowdies. You guys are rowdy every time you come up. They could hear us coming down the hall. We'd be laughing and joking and, you know, pushing mom in the wheelchair or walker or whatever she was in at that moment. And we just had the, the best times up there and made the best of the trips. And every time we were done, we went to Rosie's and had her Italian meal you know, each time, whether it was with a caregiver or other family members. Yeah, it, it was awesome. So I think we've lived up to our name. Everybody tells us that, especially when they <laughs> announce us at the walks. I said, OK, guys, now when they announce Bruce Rowdy's, you know what we got to do? We got to live up to our name and we hoop and holler. So challenge accepted. I love that. How many how many Bruce Rowdy's are there currently? Um, if you count all of them on the rosters, probably about 60 some, but we're spread out Ooh. all over the country. So it's just really tough for them to actually come and be present on walk day. So yeah. th this year, I think coming back after COVID, maybe we had uh, 15, 16 of us there, you know, it actually in person. And I will say we missed out on one family of five or no seven because they have five kids they had just gotten a little puppy and they said that there were no dogs allowed so literally okay. they would have been there so that would have been seven more from our family oh, but i love it well there's they, always they there's to bring always the puppy next, yeah there's always <laughs> have, puppies are big responsibilities when they're that tiny <laughs> i know yeah <laughs> i think it's only 10 so weeks old yeah. Ruth Rowdies. I mean, this is, I love that you guys are living up to your name and I hope you keep mm -hmm. being as loud as can be. And if yeah. anyone watching, if any of you want to walk, but you don't want to start your own team, you can always join a team. So you yeah. are more than welcome to join the Rowdies. And That's get right. You can get, get rowdy wild with and crazy us. with them. <laughs> That's right. You got to come with your it. sense of humor and yeah. And love of life, I guess. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Well, before we let you go, Patty, is there any advice to maybe potential walkers out there that haven't done it before? Why should they come to the walk to defeat ALS? I think just not only to support their own team, you know, or even if they weren't on a team, they could see other teams in action there and just see what the community of ALS people is about because you're gonna see people there with smiles on their faces and there for a great cause, you know, for donating their time, their energy. Uh, it's not always about donating money because there's it takes a lot of volunteers to put on these uh, programs and events, especially the walk. Um, and a lot of muscle that I didn't have on walk day as an ambassador, setting up all those tables and tents, needed Sam there bench pressing the <laughs> poles up <laughs> to lock She's in tall. the tent. She's like an oh. ant. She's little, she but she can she She's can like, lift. move out of the way. I got this. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I was really sore the next day using some muscles that I hadn't used, but uh Aww. Yeah, no, but well, the, the event itself, you know, j just come out and enjoy, you know, what these ALS, not only the patients, but the people going through this journey with their loved ones, what they do. It's true. Come out, come out and be a part of this family because we will welcome you with open arms, get That's rowdy right. with Ruth Rowdies and just come out and celebrate because we'd love to have you. <laughs> Absolutely. Get on a team. Uh, Anything. Get on a team. 
It, it's true. Oh, Patty, I can't wait to get to see you in person at a walk because I will be back at some point. So I can't wait to see the rowdies in action and see you guys out there doing it or, or catch you at an event because I'm so excited that not only are you a part of this family, is your team a part of this family, but we didn't even get to touch on it. Uh, you are an ambassador. So we're so happy to have you out yes. there just championing yeah. on behalf of ALS, yep. spreading awareness and sharing Ruth's story everywhere so thank you so much for everything you do and keep stay on stay being rowdy i love this <laughs> i i will you don't have to worry about me i'm always rowdy <laughs> <laughs> oh i love your positivity well patty we will see you again very soon probably at the next als event <laughs> yes yes i i'm here i'm available i'll help in any way i can that's what that's what the life of a retired person is you can help <laughs> anytime that's right. Well, it sounds like you've cracked the code. You figured the secret out. So good for you. Enjoy retirement and enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Susan. <laughs>